Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Um, just starting with the US session here, we had the opening candle close and the next candle started printing. So um, <clears throat> not a whole lot of setups that meet my requirements, but um, we did find pound USD. Um, however, it's in a kind of a bad uh, spot for me for um, selling it, um, mostly because of the um, the whole number we're going to be running into. So um, this right here, this whole number here, the one one point three. That's very significant, and there's a good chance that it could do some wild things. I mean, it a lot of times it can, it can break through and then come back and just do this for the rest of the uh, trading week. Um, you can see back here, it just kind of blew through it, but it is a retest of that level for sure so just be watching it um i don't really have a take profit just yet i think what i'll do is just kind of wait hang out and wait and see kind of what happens as it approaches i um, mean i'll see that would be about that's only about 15 pips or so away and decide if we want to close out or break even and so that's where we're at right now. All right, so this is where some experiences come into play and go ahead and make a decision to exit this trade. Um, it got down to um, about 10 or 11 pips. Um, and then I'm starting to see some price rejection. And the thing is, is that for US session, I see a lot of uh, reversal. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this trade uh, break even and just get out of it. Um, also, I don't particularly like the fact that we're so close to the um, 130 level here. It's just such a significant level and price has it's just, it's really inconsistent about what kind of what happens, it's, you know, being so close to it. As you can see here, it came down over here, but it got close within 20 pips, but it never touched. Um, same here, this is another really good indication. Look at that big, long um, reversal candle um, coming into the US session and it just got rejected. Uh, never made it down to, to the level, came close, but never made it down. So it's a similar, to me, it's, it's, it's a similar situation in the probability and playing probabilities that this is going, these two scenarios here are going to play out again. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, we'll look for another opportunity. All right, so I mean, I haven't found any other entry points just yet, but um, we just closed on the third candle of the US session open. So um, now it's the time to be looking. And as you can see here, I've got this pound USD again. I um, exited out of that trade that I had on earlier, which was a good decision because we just had 30, 40 pips of drawdown. If we were in that, we just definitely got stopped out. So. That was a good decision. Saw the candle just not quite making it. We were hitting some support. And plus, the big thing here is that we've got this. Um, let me get my annotation tool here. Um, I've got this um, 1.3 handle here. That is just a significant level. Um, but I reset my sell stop entry. And I've got, um, again, I'm going to target the push through that. Um, it doesn't look like it's one-to-one. -one. Uh, I wanted it to be like 25 pips, so something like that. That makes it about one-to-one -one trade um, if it does decide to push through. Um, and just to show you kind of why I um, key in on these um, whole number levels here, if I zoom out. And all you have to do is just scroll back. I mean, you don't have to draw any levels. Basically, you can just see um, in in the history, you know, just looking at these levels here, you can see price does react. 
Um, but what I wanted to show was back here. Um, so the danger with running into um, this whole number level or these whole number levels is a lot of times what you'll get is you'll get an initial push through. You can see that spike right there, just put poke through and then gets rejected 50 pips off or 100 pips sometimes, you know. Um, <clears throat> and then it kind of, if it's going to go through, you can see there is follow through um, and it just runs right through. Um, so it's a bit deceiving, you know. Here you can see here we had basically two runs at it here and before it got rejected. Um, so it's just a bit of hit or miss with these levels. The, um, what I like doing with them is I don't really like trading around them. Um, I do like trading um, from and to them. So, um, you know, like this day right here would be a day since we've been in an uptrend all along. Um, this would, this right here would be a day that I would target to push up to that level. Um, that's kind of how I approach the um, sweet spots indicator. Again, it's not perfect, but it's more or less my le quote unquote levels. So if you mainly draw your levels, that's why I like this because it does help show that um, pretty clearly. <clears throat> and it's true for the minor um, whole numbers as well. <clears throat> um, and the 50, the 50 level is kind of like a potential um, place of consolidation. It's just a natural hesitation point between the two whole, whole numbers. So essentially you have here is uh, zero and 100 pips. And this of course would be the 50 pip level here at this level here. So between these two, the natural hesitation point is in the middle. It's just kind of how it works. I pretty much ignore the um, 25, quote, quote, 25 quarters um, because they're just not significant, even though there does, there often is price action along them. It usually is not a rejection point or a um, support point. Um, if there is, it's usually quite temporary. So anyway, that's just uh, a little bit to bit of info on the uh, sweet spots indicator and why I like using it. So anyway, we'll see. Looks like we're approaching our um, entry point here. Curious if it takes us in. Just take a look around. Um, pound CAD looks interesting. Oh, we got taken in on pound USD. Pound CAD looks interesting because it's in a cell. We're in we're in a cell zone here, and <clears throat> we've had this nice rejection. <clears throat> excuse me, off of that whole number. All right. So <clears throat> we also found another entry point on pound Aussie, and um, we had a small pullback enough for me. So I hopped in on that last candle there. Um, <clears throat> got extended targets, you know, just trying to make up some distance. Um, and then Pound USD took us in. I'm also in um, Euro Franc, and I have a Euro USD setup, potential setup. So we'll see if any of those pan out. But um, right now we've got Pound Aussie and Pound USD as um, trades that we're in. <clears throat> All right, so we're approaching targets here on Pound Aussie. Um, <clears throat> we were in a buy earlier this morning and uh, reversed on this. So this is kind of a, a makeup trade on that, uh, that position. <clears throat> and our pound USD had a small pullback. So um, hopefully we get some follow through on that one.
All right, so for Pound Ozzy, this is what's the nerve wracking part of these whole number levels here is that you truly don't know if it's going to balance off and react off of it or push through it. Um, so a lot of times I will just mainly close when I think I'm really, so it's at 30 pips was my target and I closed out at 27. So that's good enough for me. So we got 27 pips on the day for there we had uh, basically break even on pound US dollar, which was, I think we got like three pips, but that's pretty much um, break even for me um, on this reversal here. So we, we were selling and on this candle, and then um, I saw <clears throat> this getting rejected right there. So I just manually <clears throat> exited out of that trade and reset uh, for a sell stop. It took us in um, on this wick right here. So we'll see if that can hold. If that candle does not um, hold bearish, then we'll exit with a uh, with a loss. Um, I mentioned I'm in uh, Euro CHF. Let me just see how that's doing. Euro CHF is in a small pullback, so we're at break even right now. And then Euro USD triggered, and we're up five pips on that one. So that's a buy. Euro USD is a buy. Euro franc, Swiss franc is a sell. Okay, so I just pulled up uh, the other trades that I'm involved in. I've got. Um, Euro Swiss Swiss franc over here. It, I had a um, sell trend going. Um, then at the open of <clears throat> the U.S. session, the close of this candle, I missed the trade basically here. So we had a spike up. I the, the trade for me should be a sell stop at that level on that on that um, pullback. In which case <clears throat> we're missing out. Probably would have been closed by now. 10 pips. Um, I think what I was thinking is that that 10 pips is not enough movement. I think it has more um, bearish movement to go. So it's kind of where I, where I entered uh, at the close of that um, kind of a doji there um, on this candle right here, on this bullish candle I saw. Oh, sorry, wrong one. This, uh, this candle here. Um, it closed as, as a pullback. So that's why I reset um, what was like, well, I'll set at the low of it. I set myself up at basically at the low of that and got taken in on this candle here. So um, hopefully this is gonna, just gonna be a pullback and then uh, produce a nice wick and then we'll see some follow through to the downside. Um, your USD is pushing up to our targets, which is like 20 pips. Halfway there. I think. Yeah, 20 pip target. Pound USD is figuring out what it wants to do. Like I said, the danger is is that I just I really don't I dislike trading around these um major levels like that. It's just that you just get some weird price reaction sometimes so kind of bucks the trend if you will quite often but um what basically on that play what i'm thinking is is that it already kind of pushed down pulled back and that's kind of the pullback on the larger higher time frame so i'm betting the probability that's going to actually push through a little bit or hit it like it needs to to touch it, which it hasn't done yet. Um, so it's that's kind of the the thinking behind that trade, and along with my other in indications that it is downward movement and all that good stuff. So anyway, that's where we're at for right now. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, we got stopped out on pound U.S. dollar um, again. I just I. 
reiterate that it's this level right here. Price just does funny things. So I still think that it's actually going to be um, going down. Although pound, uh, excuse me, the euro is stronger, looks like, and it is an uptrend. Um, and euro franc is still in the downtrend as well. So it's kind of a bit of a mix that's happening, but um, oh well, been unfortunate. <clears throat> Took away all of our pound Aussie um, wins, so basically break even. I'm actually going to be. I've just moved my target, my take profit up higher on Euro USD. Um, looking at this wick right here and um, this level right here, this level right here. Um, I just think it's bullish. I think that um, it's going to break through and, and this whole number level, even though we've had resistance, resistance, I think it's going to push up and then pull back into it for support and then continue up. That's my um, guess, and that's what I'm betting on here uh, to happen. No, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, of course. Um, so what that means for me is actually waiting for um, this candle to close, this one hour candle, and kind of evaluate where we're at. Um, if we're anywhere above 10 pips or above, um, then what I'm gonna do is just move my stop loss uh, to probably five pips below, not break even, but below break even, probably five pips below, just to reduce some of the, um, the damage if it does decide to reverse off of this um, whole number level here. So that's kind of the plan um, action on Euro USD, And that's it for now anyway. Um, let's see, Frank is still thinking about what it wants to do, Euro Frank. I'm, my signals are telling me it's bearish. So I'm just, I'm still in this bearish. We'll see what happens with these two. All right, so just the last update, I gotta hop off to a, uh, a meeting. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna be able to kind of see what happens here. That were last five minutes of this candle. I'm just gonna go ahead and move up my stop to um, roughly five pips or so below um, my entry price. That way, you just kind of protect. I think this is gonna go up. It'd be unfortunate if it comes back and hits my. Stop loss, but that's the risk you take. Um, Euro Frank is going in our direction. I'm just going to let that one as is um, and see if it can push on through nicely for us. So, anyway, we'll uh, we'll come back after the meeting and see how we're doing. All right. So I just <laughs> it uh, unfortunately on Euro USD came within a pip and pulled back. So. <laughs> Um, just because I don't want to babysit this and I want to secure some profits. That's unfortunate. It came really close. Um, all right. Well, I think I'm going to close, go ahead and close out this video for, uh, it's been a long one. Um, <clears throat> typically in, uh, by this time, if, if it hasn't happened, it's probably not going to happen. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably close out my uh, positions that I had um, uh, stop orders placed. So we'll just go ahead and close everything out and be done for the day. Um, mixed results, but I'm still pretty happy about the uh, entry strategy I have. It's, um, well, it, it keeps you out of, um, it can keep you out of some um, bad situations. It did not this morning with Pound Ozzy, unfortunately. It, um, I think my target's, um, this is going to reverse no matter what, I think, and my targets um, were a little bit out of reach by because I was thinking uh, that they were going to be, be pushing up to this uh, next level, but obviously, as you can see, it this was a rejection level, not a support level, so um, it did push up, pulled back, we got a nice doji candle here, and all signs were go for buy. I think anyone would agree to that. So that's why I had that set up in there. Um, I think I could have minimized my losses if I had just 
exited off of the next signal, but I'll have to revisit that in my strategy to see um, what constitutes um, early exit um, from a failed trade rather than just letting it hit stop loss. That could help mitigate some of the, the losses, certainly. Um, I did jump back in. This one got, um, so this one I pound is in, I can't remember, but um, we did recover pretty much all of the losses. So I think on, on, on the whole of the day, it was pretty much a break even day, um, which is fine. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed and uh, take care. More videos to come.